Starting in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to build a new concordance database. We begin the database building process by going to File, New, which brings up a dialog box with several template databases that we can choose from. Now for this exercise, we'll be picking the blank database option so that we can really build everything from scratch. But as you can see, concordance actually comes with some pre-designed databases that you can select so that you don't have to create any new fields or structures. The template databases include a transcript database or generic email and even an e-documents database. It is also possible to create more template databases if you find yourself using specific database formats over and over again. But that's a topic we'll leave for the next advanced lesson on tips and tricks. So let's start by clicking on the blank option and then click OK. Once you click OK, you'll be prompted for a location to save the database. Now, depending on your network setup, you'll likely have a specific folder where concordance databases are kept. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and save the database into my demo folder, calling it aplcsdemo.dcb. This DCB extension is what identifies this file to be related to concordance. As soon as we save the file, we are automatically prompted for input on the various fields that this database should have. Back in the overview chapter, we went over the various fields that are available in concordance, the text field, paragraph, number, and date field. This screen that we are looking at right now will be where the fields are chosen. And to determine the fields that we will want, we'll have to look at the data dat file that was provided. A good vendor should give you not just a dat file, but a list of the fields that exist within the dat file itself. The field information, meaning what to capture, what date fields, what name fields, etc., should have been discussed prior to processing, and the name should be provided by your chosen vendor. Here in our original DAT file, we can see that we have quite a few fields of information. This first row contained the field names. So I want to model my new database after these same fields in the DAT file. I can see, for instance, that this DAT file begins with a start page. Then the next field is called end page, and then I have a field for date and then document type. So in my new database, my first field will also need to be called start page. I type the name here and then select the field format. Because the start page really is the beginning Bates number, I'm going to use a text field. Now I could also use a paragraph field, but knowing that my Bates number is not going to go over say 10 characters, there's no need for me to make it into a paragraph field. That's taking up more room than necessary. I could also use the number format, but being a base number, I may use some sort of prefix later on, so I want to keep it as a text field. For most purposes, the text and number formats are the same, except that the text allows non-numeric characters, meaning you can have alphabets in there. And one thing to keep in mind is that for numbers to sort properly within a text field, the numbers will have to be zero filled. Other than that small shortcoming, a text field is a fine replacement for a number field. Next, since I've chosen a text field, I can specify the length. And like I said, this is a Bates field, so I don't think it will go over more than 20 characters. The next two fields are places and formats really come into play for number fields. Now, down on the bottom of the screen, there are several checkboxes. This first box, the image box, can only be applied to a single field. It specifies which box is to be the image key. I'm going to check off this box for the start page field, since this is going to be my image key. This tells concordance that when the image camera button is clicked, concordance should check this start page field for the image number that should be displayed in Opticon. The system checkbox, for most purposes, will never really be used. It's a default type of field that is hidden from most users for concordance's internal purposes, generally used for replication. The next checkbox is the key field. is kind of an odd field. I generally recommend that you check it out for all fields. The key field helps you to make your relational searches much faster and is necessary when you need to make a comparison of fields between multiple databases for overlaying data. The drawback to checking off too many key fields is that the database size gets a little bigger. But I think the nominal size increase is actually worth the extra search speed. Personally, I actually think all fields should be key fields and this checkbox option should be removed 
but data flight might have some other uses for it. The index field defines whether or not this field should be searched. This basically means should the words within this field be a part of the dictionary when they come up in a search. Obviously, you want as many searchable fields as possible, but keep in mind that too many search fields generally result in a very large dictionary file and may overall impact your database performance. It's generally a good idea to leave the number fields unchecked and any other fields that you feel you will not need to search unchecked as well. There are two other checkboxes that really should never be used either. Now one of these is the OCR indexing, which in the latest version of Concordance actually has already been removed. So depending on when you purchased Concordance 2007, you may not see this OCR indexing anymore. OCR indexing was designed to specify certain fields as OCR text so that searching will take into consideration most of the gibberish text that will appear in OCR files. But apparently that caused the searches to be so unreliable that it was never used, so Datafy took it out as an option beginning in the late versions of Concordance 2007. This other checkbox is also not used. The accession checkbox, which is currently grayed out, will become available if you choose a number field. Concordance automatically stores a unique number for each record that is created in the database, similar to an auto ID in Microsoft Access. That auto number in Concordance is hidden, but you can actually check off this accession box to have that hidden ID number available for viewing in a field. The number can't be changed or edited, but users can then see Concordance's hidden ID number, which would really serve no purpose. So. So for the most part, you will not find yourself using this checkbox at all. Okay, now that the first field, the start page field has been created, I'll click on the new button and create an end page field. Again, I type in the name here, choose text as the format and give it a 20 character length. I want this as a key field as well, but nothing else. Next, I click new or I could also have used the shortcut keys by holding down the Alt key and the N key together. And the next field I want is the date field. So I'll type in date, choose the date format this time, and notice that I can choose many different date types, either two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year, or I can have year, month, day, or day, month, year. For this demo, I'll go with year, month, and day, because as you can see from my original dat file here, the format is year, month, and day. And I'll make this a key and index field because I want the date to be searchable. Next, according to this dat file, I need a doc type field. So I give it a name doc type, make it into a text field, and this time I'll give it a full 60 character length just in case there is long type description in the dat file and I want to check off the key and index field because I want this field to be searchable. And you get the idea. Basically, I want to refer to my list of available fields in the dat file and create a new field for each within my concordance database. Now, unfortunately, there is currently no direct import of field names that can be done from a dat file directly into concordance. So instead of going through each field and repeating these same steps, I'm going to go ahead and just open up a blank structure database that I've already created ahead of time. So let me go ahead and go to File, Open, and go to my APL CS demo database. But before we move away from this screen, let me briefly mention the function of the rest of these buttons so that you have an understanding of them. The New button you've already seen simply lets you create a new field. The Insert button will insert a new field above your highlighted field. So if I select the CC field here, then click the Insert button, an empty field right above CC will be available. The Delete button allows you to delete a field, and the Print button allows you to save this list of fields into a text file. Now as for this Compressed Data checkbox, that generally should always be checked off to help save space. The status rectangle shows the current number of fields in the database and the number of records available. And the punctuation box is where you can input any characters that should be ignored in your searching. As a default, this concordance database will ignore the period, comma, slash, and apostrophe as punctuations when searching and won't count them as separate words. 
and there we have the generation of a new empty database. Once I have all my selections made and the fields that I wanted, I just click OK. What I now have is just a shell of the database. In fact, if we take a look within Windows, when I created my list of fields and made my various key and index selections, Concordus created these four basic files. The main.dcb file, the ini file, the key file, and the layout file. And while I can open up the database file, there's no data in it. My next step, which is covered in the next lesson, is to now import my data from the DAT or the DAT file into the actual concordance database shell.